I've done a little more work on the office and it's getting pretty close to being complete. I built a shelf for the French cleat wall that will be a charging station. We put in a carpet tile floor to protect the existing floor and I added some legs to an existing bookshelf that I'm going to use in the office. So for the charging station shelf, I found a piece of birch plywood that I had and I cut a strip from that. Then I cut that strip to the length that I wanted to make the shelf. And I cut the pieces for the shelf from that piece so that they would all be the same length. And I put a rabbit at the front and the back of the top piece of the shelf. And the rabbit on the front will take a short piece that I'll make into the face for the shelf. And on the back, there'll be a rabbit for the cleat that'll go into the French cleat. The piece in the front is approximately three quarters of an inch and the piece in the back is approximately half an inch. Now I can glue those pieces into the rabbits. And the front face just needs some glue and a few nails. And the cleat that I'll attach, I glued into place and I nailed it both from the back and from the top because it needs to be strong in tension as the cleat will be pulling away from the wall. So the way a French cleat works, the, the cleat is in tension and is pulling away from the wall and it's at the top of whatever you're hanging off the system. Then there needs to be a lower part that's in compression that's pushing against the wall. So whatever you're hanging off the wall is sort of rotating away. It's pulling away at the top and pushing into the wall at the bottom. So I made some legs for the little shelf that will hang down below the shelf. So they don't need to actually attach to the wall. They just need to be able to push against the wall. And these legs need to fit in between the two pieces that I added to the shelf. So they'll be out of the way of the cleat. And I have a power strip that I'm going to add to the front face of the shelf. And this will be the, the power station for all of my charging. All of the different camera batteries and recording batteries and light batteries and all the things that I use that need charging. Now we put in a floor and it's mostly just to protect the existing floor that's in this room. I'd started out thinking it would be more of just an area under my chair, but it kind of grew and it, it never really became the entire floor. I think at this point, what I should have done is done this first and just done the entire floor. <laughs> we ended up having to cut around the desks and the shelves that I'd put in the space. Now I have a bookcase that I built a while back at our old house and it was part of a two piece system where I had drawers on the bottom and shelves on the top. And it's a little taller than eight feet so it doesn't fit in our new house. So we've had it separated using the, the drawers as drawers and the bookshelves as bookshelves. So what I wanna do is make legs for these shelves and I can use that in the office. Now I'd had a vision in my head that it would sit up in the air on two legs on the front of the shelves and I would attach the bookshelves to the wall on the back. And I thought it would be nice to make some offset turned legs so they'd have a little bit of a foot. It would sort of look, look like two little legs with feet sitting at the corner of the shelves. So I can get the pieces ready. I like to cut a X into the end for the, the drive center on the lathe. And I can find the center at the other end and just push it into the, into the drive center. And it was a super nice day, so I opened the door behind the lathe. So I've done one of these offset turnings before, but it's been a while. So what I'm trying to repeat from memory is to do the two ends with the block of wood centered. And once I get the two ends fairly close, 
I can shift the end of the tailstock to a new center. And what I found this time from doing this is you don't have to shift it very much. I started with it out near the edge and it really doesn't need to be that much to get quite a bit of effect in the turning. So I ended up moving it back. So it's about halfway between the center and the edge of the piece of wood. So I can turn the main body or the, the main shaft of the piece with it off center. And what this gives you is a foot that you turn centered and then a leg that's turned off centered and you get a get sort of a foot. It's sort of a, a cheat version of a ball and claw foot. <laughs> I suppose you could do this and finish it by carving by hand and getting a, a ball and claw foot from this. This is sort of getting to the blank that you'd use for something like that. So the first one I had to sand to kind of get the foot and the leg to mesh up. And the second one I did, I, I think I was getting the hang of it and I got them to mesh up pretty well without sanding too much. And I sanded the ends on the disc sander just a little to get them a little more level. I should have spent more time getting my pieces of wood before I started turning to be more exact, more square and more level so that the legs would be vertical when they're attached. But this worked okay. And I brought the bookshelf into the office and I figured out pretty quickly once I started doing this that I really could have just hung the bookshelf off the wall on a cleat and not done the legs. I'm not sure the legs are really doing a whole lot except looking pretty. But I attached them directly to the shelf. And I can carefully stand the bookshelf up. I, I can't just rotate it on the legs, they'll, they'll break off. And I can stand it up against the wall. Now I ended up putting a cleat on the underside of the back just to hold the back of the shelf up. And I attach the shelf to the wall so it won't tip forward. But like I said, not, now that I'm looking at this and once I was doing it, really I could have just mounted it to the wall. But I like how the legs turned out. And I can put a few things on it. Now I cut out and made more boxes for the cleat wall. And I ended up making them a little bit shorter, so not so tall, but they're basically the same design. And they'll, they'll fit close together, but I think I'll probably keep them spaced a little bit further apart. So this is what the office or the sort of workstation room looks like. I have the new shelves up. I want to build some wider boxes for the little bit behind the door. I have the charging station and more boxes to fill and the desk is almost cleared off. The other big thing I'd like to do in this room is to build a little photo studio on the other desk. So I need to make a light setup for photographing small objects like wood turned bowls and that kind of thing. So the office is pretty close. Thanks for watching.